Hey guys, welcome to Dirt Road Believer. It's Thursday and this is the week of Valentine's. So I hope you have been enjoying your Valentine's week. I hope it's been filled with love. And at my school, it is also kindness week. So we have been finding different ways to be kind and show love to each other that way as well. I want to remind you that Tuesday we started a study that we're going to finish today and it is in the book The Song of Songs and our question Tuesday was who wrote the book of love? Well Solomon did and he wrote it about him and his um, love and so we went through Tuesday we went through the courtship of this relationship and today we are getting to the very celebrated marriage and what comes after the marriage the wedding night so it gets pretty steamy um today so if you have young ones listening you might want to um get them interested in another youtube channel for today <laughs> but i'm so glad that you're with me um thanks for joining me for a time of devotion and we're going to get to that right now All right, let's get into our time of devotion. We're in Song of Psalms, and I'm just going to recap just a little bit um, to where we ended with the courtship. The last, one of the last things we read on Tuesday was, Young women of Jerusalem, I charge you by the gazelles and the wild does of the field, do not stir up or awaken love until the appropriate time. And so the woman is speaking of... The marriage bed here and that that is the appropriate time to um to complete this intimacy that they have dreamed and desired so much in their courtship all right there's a another voice a fourth voice that enters into this song and it is the narrator's voice which we find in the end of chapter three and that gets us to this very pomp and circumstance um kind of over the top wedding it says in verse 9, King Solomon made a carriage for himself. With wood from Lebanon, he made its posts of silver, its backs of gold, and its seat of purple. Its interior is inlaid with love by the young women of Jerusalem. Go out, young women of Zion, and gaze at King Solomon, wearing the crown that his mother placed on him. On the day of his wedding, the day of his heart's rejoicing so this brings us to the wedding day and um, I guess we can imagine that because it quickly skips into the marriage night um, this is the wedding night beginning in chapter 4 and the man speaks first he says how beautiful you are my darling how very beautiful behind your veil your eyes are like doves your hair is like a flock of goats streaming down Mount Gilead your teeth are like a flock of newly shorn sheep coming up from it from the washing each one bearing its twin and none has lost its young so she has all of her teeth that's that's a beautiful <laughs> attribute your lips are like a scarlet cord. Your mouth is lovely. Behind your veil, your brow is like a slice of pomegranate. Your neck is like the Tower of David constructed in layers. A thousand shields are hung on it, all of them shields of warriors. Your breasts are like two fawns, twins of a gazelle that feed among the lilies. Until the day breaks and the shadows flee, I will make my way to the mountain of myrrh and the hill of frankincense. You are absolutely beautiful, my darling. There is no imperfection in you. And we're going to stop right here for just a minute because his compliments, we heard them in the courtship, but we did not hear any compliments beyond what he could see. Um, past her clothing and so now we see that his compliments are extending to the rest of her and I want to before we go on I want to explain something to you in a minute you're gonna hear him um, several times say sister bride and when he's talking about um, his sister his bride he does not mean that she is his sister um, when men often would refer to their wives that way back then because the relationship they had with their sister was the closest um, 
the closest that they had to any female in their life. And so that affection um, that they would show their sister, that affection that they could display somewhat in public, um, that's the, the tenderness that we see here when he refers to his sister. It just indicates um, a closeness. So we go on in verse 8. Come with me from Lebanon, my bride. Come with me from Lebanon. Descend from the peak of Amana, from the summit of Sinir and Hermon, from the dens of lions, from the mountains of leopards. You have captured my heart, my sister, my bride. You have captured my heart with one glance of your eyes, with one jewel of your necklace. How delightful your caresses are, my sister, my bride. Your caresses are much better than wine and the fragrance of your perfume than any balsam. Your lips drip sweetness like the honeycomb, my bride. Honey and milk are under your tongue. The fragrance of your garments is like the fragrance of Lebanon. This is a very sensual book, as you can tell from the language. And we spoke about this a little bit the other day, but why would God choose to put this book in the Bible? Because he wants to express the relation, he wants to express the love that he has given um, for man and woman and how it is to be um, carried out in a courtship and in a marriage. So the wedding has happened, they're at the wedding night and he has just showered her with compliments and um, just described her in such a beautiful way. Not only is it are they just compliments, but she's getting to see herself the way that he sees her. There is no imperfection in you. That's how he looks at her. And so she is being affirmed again and again. And they are about to move into part two of the wedding night. He says in verse 12, my sister, my bride, you are a locked garden. A locked garden and a sealed spring. And this is referring to her virginity. Your branches are a paradise of pomegranates with choicest fruits, henna and nard, nard and saffron, calamus and cinnamon, with all the trees of frankincense, myrrh and aloes, with all the best spices. You are a garden spring, a well of flowing water streaming from Lebanon. And here is the invitation that the woman gives for her husband to enjoy her. In verse 16, she says, Awaken, north wind, come, south wind, blow on my garden and spread the fragrance of its spices. Let my love come to his garden and eat its choicest fruits. And these, um, these analogies given to food and spices and rich things that we can taste um, that's a way that we describe things too um, it's a he's fully engaged in the senses the, the sight the smells the tastes and he's he's saying that this is better than any anything that he could enjoy is his wife and then the man in verse 5 says I have come to my garden my sister, my bride, I gather my myrrh with spices. I eat my honeycomb with honey. I drink my wine with milk. And so here they are um, sealing the marriage. They are becoming the most intimate in this passage. And this just shows that the way God designed man and woman are to enjoy each other, to enjoy each other fully. And, you know, he is... He has given us this desire and he has given us each other to be able to enjoy. And so the narrator says, eat friends, drink, be intoxicated with caresses. And that just speaks to the freedom of the marriage bed and how we can enjoy that with a spouse. And then we're going to skip over. There's a little bit of, um, after the marriage has happened, there's a little bit of conflict between them um, that shows that we're not always right there where our partner is at all times, and that's okay. But we're going to skip to verse 7 now. And the man says, How beautiful you are, your sandaled feet, princess. The curves of your thighs are like jewelry. The handiwork of your master, your navel is a rounded bowl. It never lacks mixed wine. Your belly is a mound of wheat surrounded by lilies. Your breasts 
are like two fawns, twins of a gazelle. Your neck is like a tower of ivory, your eyes like pools in Heshbon by Bathrabim's gate. Your nose like a tower of Lebanon looking toward Damascus. Your head crowns you like Mount Carmel, the hair of your head like purple cloth. A king could be held captive in your tresses. How beautiful you are and how pleasant. My love with such delights. Your stature is like a palm tree. Your breasts are clusters of fruit. I said I will climb the palm tree and take hold of its fruits. May your breasts be like clusters of grapes and the fragrance of your breath like apricots. Your mouth is like a fine wine to me. And I love this because some time has passed. The marriage is not as new and as fresh, but we see that the husband continually affirms, compliments, um, makes her feel that she is the most beautiful woman in the world. And he continues to just compliment her and shower her with words of affirmation that she is beautiful. And I'm gonna end today with this because I think there, there's such power in um, the romantic love in this book. And I love the way that verse six and seven just kind of punctuate this love between a man and a woman. It, in verse six of chapter eight, I'm reading verse six and part of verse seven, it says, set me as a seal on your heart, as a seal on your arm, for love is as strong as death. Jealousy is as unrelenting as shoal. Love's flames are fiery flames, an almighty flame. A huge torrent cannot extinguish love. Rivers cannot sweep it away. And so guys, um, this romance that we've been talking about all this month and these couples that we have really kind of been relishing in their relationships, you can do the same in your relationship. If you are like they were when we ended and your marriage is not fresh and new anymore, it can be. So begin to relive some of those romantic feelings that you had in the very beginning and some of those compliments maybe you used to shower your spouse with and revive those and and just see how much fun it can be guys i hope that you have a wonderful day thanks again for being with me for this very romantic um passage in the bible today in song of songs and i hope you have a wonderful wonderful day next week we're going to get back on track with um greatest couples of the bible so we've got two more that we're going to cover next week and then we'll move into something new for march hope you have a wonderful wonderful weekend and until next time slow down take the dirt road